morning, Sydney. A good morning, James, and most of all, a good morning to all your listeners. Nice talking to you this this morning, Sydney. Sydney, you are now actually the the big boss of Sydney's African Wild Safaris. Now, uh, just tell us a bit about you. What is your previous experience in tourism and field guiding? <laughs> James, thank you very much. Um, I have uh, started working as a guide since 2007, and uh, my initial employment it was there by the Mapula Lodge in Waterberg, not very far away from Jalazimbi. Yeah. And then I worked there for about three consecutive years, and after that. I then uh, went to the Marakara National Park in Tawazimbi, just about eight kilometers away from Tawazimbi town. And then I was there as a senior guide in charge of the uh, field guide or the tourist guide. And uh, shortly after that, I was then promoted a head guide where I served for quite a lot of years. I was in Marakere for about 11 consecutive years. Yeah. And then I was headhunted by a multimedia company. It's called Wide Earth, where I was doing the TV presenting. Maybe a lot of your listeners um, know me already from a program called Safari Live, where I was doing some animal behavior on SABC3, and it was also broadcasted on SABC2, National Geographic, Net Geo, and also other YouTube channels. Yeah, Sydney, we feel really privileged that we've got a guy of your caliber here in, in our vicinity. You know, as you said, you, uh, you've been working for quite some time at Marakele National Park. Now, from your side, what do you, what do you see actually as your, your great achievements within the tourism industry to, uh, to, you know, since you started to date? Yeah, that is quite a, a good question, James. You know, uh, from 2010, while I was still based at Marakele, uh, I, I managed to dominate uh, a lot of achievements. At the moment, I have got about 19 accolades. And these 19 accolades are consisted of both uh, provincial awards, national awards, as well as the awards from the South African National Parks. The South African National Parks, they are also running their own awards. The biggest award there is called the Kudu Awards. And these Kudu Awards, I think I've got, uh, if not five, six different categories. So I, I have lined up an impressive number of awards on my short career as a guide. And I'm a defending champion of the 2019 National Lelizela Awards, which is a ministerial award. That's that's fantastic. Now, Sydney, what is it that you uh, that you are most passionate about? Uh, you know that caused it that you started your Sydney's wildlife safaris, African wild safaris. Yeah, you know, James, uh, what motivated me to start the Sydney's African wild safaris is that I have interacted a lot with uh, tourists from uh, the whole world, and some of these people, uh, on their feedbacks, they have always been suggesting that I've got to start my own guiding because uh, the way how I present wildlife is amazing and these people were living my activities such as game drive having unforgettable experiences and then I saw that okay let me start a business and this business will then serve as uh, part of the environmental awareness. And then I started the Sydney's African Wild Safaris when I saw that there is quite a lot of uh, traditional stories and mythical stories associated with animals. And a lot of people from the community, they hate some of these animals for no reason, just because of some of the mythical stories associated with the animals. Then I saw, let me now try and act as a voice to protect this majestic and beautiful animals. Uh, what, what would you say, Sydney, from your side, you know, uh, Sydney's African wild safaris, what, what uh, kind of positive impact do you see, you know, on our country and also the communities? You briefly touch on that. Oh, yes. You know, when it comes to the communities, um, there is quite a lot of positive impact because now our community is starting at large. It is starting to understand that 
we we have to live with these animals and these animals they help us a lot we are in fact the beneficiaries because people are coming to spend money all the way from overseas to come and see these animals i have seen quite a lot of positive uh, impact especially when it comes to the youth because people are spreading a message everyone is so touched and everybody wants to play a role when it comes to the preservation of our african wildlife so the Sydney's African Wild Safaris is also giving people an, an easy access. It's acting as a link between the park and the people, the reserves and the people, because we are catering for activities such as game drive and at an affordable price. Now, Sydney, with your, your experience over many years, surely you must have a favorite animal. Have you got a favorite animal specifically? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody would say a leopard or a lion. Is it, are you the same? Uh, that is quite an amazing present, James. <laughs> you know, yes, I do have a, a favorite animal. And um, I know a lot of people, when it comes to the favorite animal, they, they don't see it an interesting animal. Uh, my favorite animal is the dung beetle, and I know a lot of people will consider dung beetle an, an interesting animal based on what they eat and where they live. But you know, the dung beetles, they play a very significant role in this ecology. If we don't have dung beetle as South Africans, we're going to be faced with quite a lot of uh, challenges regarding the population of flies. James, when you see the dung beetle busy rolling the ball, you must know that that ball is coming from a, a maiden or is coming from a territorial demarcation point where you will see quite a lot of droppings. So this ball, they are coming from there. And when the dung beetles are taking away these droppings in the form of balls, they are taking away a place for the flies to lay more eggs. If you go to the other international countries, James, such as Australia, Australia or New Zealand, they have got a very serious problem with the population of flies because they are lacking these very beautiful and interesting dung beetles. And apart from that, they will go and hide that ball under the ground. Before they hide the ball, they dig a hole. Digging a hole increases the space within the soil for water penetration. And also hiding the ball under the ground, they are now acting as a natural fertilizer. So you can see that we have got quite a lot of beneficial uh, roles from the dung beetles. Oh, I, uh, I must agree with you, uh, Sydney. You know, the other day I was also stayed on the farm here uh, outside of Zimbi, and I was watching this dung beetle, and it was quite a small dung beetle. And you know, this ball that it was rolling. Now, I try to compare to say, okay, the weight of this ball must be, I don't know what, so many grams, and the dung beetle is so many grams. So, you know, it's like, like a human being trying to roll a big iron ball or something. So that, that, that little animal must be very strong, eh? <laughs> Yeah, you know, James, dung beetles is one of those strongest insects because they can be able to push something uh, at least 1,140-something multiplied by the body weight. So they are very much strong animals. Yeah. Now, Sydney, just tell me the areas why we Sydney, um, Sydney's African safaris, where you are actually operating, which national parks are, do you operate? Yeah, James, Sydney's African Wild Safaris um, is an independent tour operator catering for the activities in parks such as Marakele National Park, which is not very far away from your house, I believe. And then we also do the Kruger National Park as a whole, and we are also doing the Mapungube National Park. But we are not limited. We can also take you to other interesting areas of, uh, of your interest. If you call us wanting to visit some of the uh, archaeological or the historical sites in an open safari vehicle, yeah, we can possibly make some arrangement and see if we can take you there. So do you know with these, uh, the lockdown that we've got now and we've got uh, the problem with uh, foreign vis visitors and so on, surely that must also have a big impact on the national parks and on the kind of uh, these, uh, your business and other businesses as well. Yeah, James, uh, the uh, COVID-19 and the uh, regulations there 
uh, made it very much difficult for us uh, to survive, especially the whole of uh, 2020. It was not easy because we are depending on the international uh, tourists. And then, uh, yes, they have introduced the interprovincial tourism. Yeah, we tried a little bit to get more business from our own people, local people. Uh, but without the international guests, it is very much difficult. I'm not saying the regulations which were put there, uh, it was not uh, good for the government to do so because, yes, anyway, they, their priority was uh, the, uh, the uh, protection of our lives. Yo, Sydney, just now, if, if you take people to these parks, uh, do they sleep? Where do they sleep? Do they sleep in chalets? Do they sleep in the field in tents? Or how does it work? <laughs> yeah, James, uh, let me now maybe talk about the Marakele National Park, what we're doing there before Kruger National Park. We are having the day visitors. Uh, day visitors are those people that we come and take. And here in Sydney's, at Sydney's African Wild Safaris, if you book with us coming from Tawazimbi, considering the proximity, we will come and take you from your house. Uh, as a family, uh, the minimum eight people will come and take you and we drive you into the park for a whole day. We spend much time with you, educating you about where we are, interacting you from the beginning of the game drive until the end. And then uh, we have got also the half day game drives where we will take you just for a half day, which is normally six hours. And if you want to go there just for three hours, morning or afternoon, then we can take you for just three hours. So people who would like to sleep over in Marrakech National Park through Sydney's African Wild Safaris, they are also welcome to do so. We can book them to sleep over in the park. But I'm also working hand in hand with all the adjacent lodges from the uh, Marrakech National Park because people who are visiting them, they are also interested to do game drives. But if you've got a lodge in Tawazimbi uh, by the surrounding of Marrakech National Park, you're more than welcome to contact us so that you can then become a link between your people and the park who can become your service provider and i can promise you will give your client the best unforgettable experience excellent good to hear that so then just give us your contact details i don't know if you've got a website or an email address and a telephone number that you can give us yeah, uh, James, and uh, not long time ago, about a few weeks ago, we have also launched the Sydney's African Wild Stories, which is our kind of a YouTube channel where we are also posting some of the interesting clips so that people can always enjoy what we are doing out in the world. So yes, we have got a website. People are more than welcome to visit us. Our website is www.sydneysafricanwildsafaris.com. You can also call us on 076-774-8348, 076-774-8348. Also on other social media platforms such as um, Facebook, we're there at Sydney's African Wild Safaris. The Sydney's African Wild Safaris. If not, you can follow me on Sydney. Umurani, Sydney, Umurani, Sydney, that was very nice to talk to you this morning. Thank you for the very informative session and uh, and good luck with your uh, with your business. And I trust, especially you know, with the with the lockdown, that it will be lifted at one stage, that we can get foreign visitors. I think it will have a great impact on your business and also obviously the national parks and also the the other parks surrounding Marakele National Park. So, uh, no, thanks for talking to me this morning. I appreciate it. And um, thank you very much as well on behalf of the Sydney's African Wild Safaris for such a great opportunity for us to interact with the general public. Thank you, uh, Sydney. We'll talk again, but uh, good luck and best wishes and enjoy your day. Hopefully, I'll be taking you for a game drive soon. I would like to offer you a complimentary game drive soon when I come back to Tawazindi. It's just that now I am in a class attending the Mandarin language, which is a Chinese-speaking language. So you're going to, to concentrate on Chinese as well, because a lot of visitors, you know, if they can come to South Africa, we get a lot of uh, Chinese visitors to South Africa. Yes, no, I will be now talking Mandarin. I don't think you'll be able to hear me when I come back, James, after two months. <laughs> <laughs>
Sunny, thank you. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for the invite and have a good day. And um, thanks for talking to me this morning. Eh? Thank you very much. Keep well, eh? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.